So hello, welcome. The topic of today's video is going to be swarm trapping. How we do it, what we do with swarms we catch, the whole nine yards from start to finish on our swarm trapping process. So to begin with, we want to discuss a little about swarm trapping in general, what it is and why you'd want to do it. Uh, so Sean, what is swarm trapping? Swarm trapping is fishing for free bees. Mm -hmm. Basically, you put the trap up in the tree and hope, hope it catches a swarm. Like the standard way of catching a swarm is to wait for somebody to give you a call. Like, oh no, I have a big ball of bees in my tree. What do I do? And then you go and you cut it down out and put it behind. The swarm trapping is you hang the box, you bait the box, and you wait. Yeah, not a guaranteed method, but it typically does work for yeah. It's very passive as opposed to the active method of catching swarms where you get a call and have to quick go do it. This, you take a little bit of time on a Saturday, hang a trap in a tree, and wait. And hope you catch a swarm of bees. Very easy to work with. Uh, there's, you can schedule around it. It's just very nice. And then, hmm, let's think, why do we want to catch free bees? Let's, <laughs> let's think about this one. Uh, that, that was pretty self-evident. Uh, bees are always dying. Why not get free bees? The bees you catch in swarm traps, uh, they're somewhat likely to be from a feral colony in the area. They might be good survivor bees that are used to surviving in your area. Um, you got to watch that a little bit, but yeah, so Catching a swarm can give you good genetics for your apiary, and it's just more free bees to work with. Why would you not want that? Uh, so we're going to go into our trap design now, how we set them up, what, why we designed them the way we did, and we'll show you through that. This is our swarm trap design. It's slightly different from the standard design you might see elsewhere. One of the main things that sets it apart is the, the depth and the way the lid is hinged. Uh, there's a video on our channel, I'll put a link on screen now, that explains exactly how to make one of these step by step in detail if you're interested in doing that. Uh, some, another, some of the other design things here, uh, the bottom is just a piece of plywood that's permanently attached, that's not a removable bottom board. Uh, we have this inch and a half hole drilled in the bottom corner with a nail across it to keep birds out. Inch and a half is about what you want to do on these entrances. Uh, you can see from these battle scars that we've caught swarms in this box before. We'll show you how, where those come from when we actually catch a swarm later in the video. Uh, looking at the side here, we have this strut. This is uh, to hang it to the tree. We'll, you'll see where this notch comes into play in the next part of the video when we actually hang a trap. Uh, looking at the lid here now, it is hinged. It'll go the whole way back. Uh, it has this crush layer on it. That's to get a nice tight seal so the light doesn't get in at the top. The bees think it's nice and airtight then. Uh, opening it up, you'll see that this accepts just 10 regular deep frames. That's very, very important when you go to actually transfer a swarm out of the trap and into its permanent home. Uh, you'll see that when we catch a swarm, uh, how easy this makes it to pull it out of the trap and into its permanent home. So yeah, we're gonna move on now to actually baiting and hanging a trap, so stay tuned for that. We're back here to hang a swarm trap at a location that we had success in last year. Now with swarm traps and baiting in bees, there's two main things that we like to use. The first is a scent attractor. One thing many people use is lemongrass oil. We prefer to use Swarm Commander. It, they both mimic the bees locator from and it pulls the scalp bees in, but we've had a lot more success with Swarm Commander. It just seems to work significantly better. So that's what we prefer to use. But lemongrass oil does work. Another thing we like to use is a frame of old drawn stinky brood comb. It just gives that the bees that extra scent of there were bees in this box before, ergo it is a perfect location to move into. So we like to have that on the outside, the bees start on that frame. And then this year we're trying out something different with our scent bait. We are putting it in a plastic bag. Last year we had come around every two weeks or so and sprayed uh, and rebaited, like just spraying into the box. That got to be very tedious because we had like 20 swarm traps up and it got to be a very long process every two weeks. This year we're going to try putting the bait in a plastic bag and letting it slow release. Hopefully we'll only have to bait the hives once and just come back to pull swarms out. So we'll roll right into that. Now let's show you how we actually hang the trap. It's very, very easy. We like to use ratchet straps simply because of how simple it is to get them into the tree. And also if you do catch a swarm, it's super simple and super gentle to get them out of the tree. Uh, you, we tried using nails and screws one year and it just it damaged the tree and it was a pain in the butt to get the swarm trap back out again and 
that is just so much easier. That covers our traps and hanging them. As you can see, it's a straightforward process. Once they have the trap built, getting it into the tree is really not a big deal. One thing we didn't mention yet that we did want to go over is as far as actually where you want to place the, the traps, uh, as far as picking a spot and the tree to put it in. Uh, there's a few factors to consider. We, see, we think that they're kind of the icing on the cake. If there's bees around and you put a really good trap out that matches everything and is baited well, this tree or that tree is not going to make a lot of difference, but it is kind of just the icing on the cake. Uh, Sean, what are some things that you should watch for when you're picking a spot for a trap? Landmarks are the biggest thing, mm -hmm. such as the inside, the inside corners of field edges, outside corners of field edges, ends of tree lines, trees that are all by themselves, or even distinctive buildings that you can hang a trap yeah. on. It's all about getting that landmark that are, that's easy for the scouts to home in on. That's, mm -hmm. It's not necessary, but it is, like I said, the icing of the cake. It's just that little bit of extra to make the spot just that little bit more attractive. Yep. So, I wouldn't be too concerned about it. We've caught swarms. I caught three in my backyard of a development last year, and there's not really anything around there. So. Get a trap out, even if it's not an ideal location. You put an ideal trap out, you got a good chance if there's bees around. Some other things we wanted to mention that, or one big thing we wanted to mention, the, the books will tell you that this should be hung 15 feet up in the air, as high as you can get it. Um, for us, the convenience of having it at eye height and the safety of it is much more valuable than the few extra percent chance of having a swarm catch if it's higher in the tree. You get a nice big swarm in there, having to fiddle that thing down out of the tree on a ladder in the middle of the night is just not super safe. Mm -hmm. So this is just convenient and easy. And if you have if you have a perfect box, that extra 10 feet of height isn't going to make any difference right. whatsoever. If you want to learn how to make a perfect box, click the link. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shameless self-promotion. Perfect. <laughs> All right, so hopefully we're going to be cutting to us actually dealing with the swarm now when we catch one later in the year. As you can see, this swarm trap has caught a swarm. At this point, we're going to wait for it to get dark and then come back and screen the entrance off so that we trap the bees inside while we transport it. The reason why we wait for it to get dark is that that way all of the foragers and whatnot have come back to the colony. Because if you don't do that, then you leave orphan bees behind and they tend to get cranky and irritable and you just, you just don't want that at one of your swarm traps. Um, we actually have a video of this swarm moving in elsewhere on the channel, so if you want to go check that out, you can. This is also a good place to discuss getting the property owners of locations where you have swarm traps interested in swarming. So most people are interested in bees or they think they're neat, but they don't really know much about them. And then once you sit down and start chatting with them about how cool bees are and then discussing the absolutely fascinating subject of swarm dynamics, they'll, they'll pretty quickly go from, yeah, it's okay, with, we're okay with you hanging a swarm trap up to, please hang a swarm trap up, that sounds cool. And then once you get them interested that way, they'll be watching trap like a hawk and just, it's, they start seeing scouts, they'll be ex as excited as you are, you'll start getting pictures and videos in, in, in your inbox, and it's, it's just wonderful good fun to have people interested in, to share the fun with you as it is. So at this point, we've used a spray bottle to make these things rain, and push them in a box, and we're just going to staple it. Just, now we're just going to staple it shut and go. Last step is to pull it out of the tree. Down the rest of the bees. They stay. They tend to stay wherever they're clustered, so you can get away with leaving them wherever they are. They do want to go to the light though, so be careful with that. A couple of the grass here too. Like that. So at this point we're just going to do a quick, we're going to do a peak check we call it. We're going to pop the latch, open it up and shut it. Now we know there's bees in here but it's always wise to double check to make sure there is indeed a swarm in the box. We've already fooled ourselves and pulled down an empty box already. And we're also curious to see how big of a swarm this is. So we're just going to go. <laughs> so we're back two and a half days later. Uh, before I go any further with this, I want to say something about the removing the box from the tree. Getting stung doing that was very abnormal. 
this box has eight frames of bees in it. It's a very, very big swarm, and there was actually bees clustered on the outside of the box when we went to remove it. And we brushed those off in the dark when we shouldn't have. We should have done that when there was still light and the bees would have moved back in. So there was bees running around the ground, which is why I got stung, because I picked up the boxes on the ground and one was on the box and zapped it. So as I said, it's two and a half days later. Typically we wait three days or whatever's convenient to open up the boxes. The reason for doing that is because it gives the bees time to build comb and the queen to start laying, which really anchors them in that position. I picked that tip up from a YouTuber by the name of 628 Dirt Rooster, and it works really well. The only swarm that we had abscond on us last year was the one that I didn't do that to. So you screen them, you move them to where you're gonna have them, and you let them sit there undisturbed for at least, well, two days, two or three days. These have been in here two and a half, and they are ready to be out. It's going to be raining tomorrow anyway, so it'll give them their three-day day. Their three-day period. And you just open it up. So we're back here now about a week after we caught this swarm. I'm not sure the exact day we caught it, but we're going to tr transfer out of the swarm trap into its new home now. It's a very straightforward process. We're just going to pick the swarm trap up. Set it to the side, and then set a hive set up right where it had been with anchors at the same spot. And then it's as simple as shifting the frames over into a new box. It's very straightforward, very easy, and the bees hardly even seem to know what happens, provided you give them enough time to settle in and build up at the new location. So we're just going to jump right into it. They've already been smoked, so... This worm isn't quite as big as it had looked when we first peeked into it. We're still pretty happy with it. Empties out of the way first. So you want to be a little bit careful when transferring these frames because right now they're festooned very heavily. So if you can, you want to move multiple frames at the same time, provided you're comfortable doing it. If you hold on the shoulders of the frame, you can get them a lot more stable than if you hold on the tabs of the frame. As you can see those bees are just hanging there, kind of swung around when we moved it. So you gotta be a little gentle with it. The less disturbance you can give them, the better. Not a whole lot of comb drawn in this one. Which is kind of surprising. I would have expected to see several frames drawn, but there wasn't a whole lot of flying days last week, so that might explain some of it. We keep it towards the edge because the, the bait comb we put in is on foundation back from the days we ran foundation frames. And we want the foundation on the edge so that it encourages them to use it for a food frame, not a brood frame. So we put them towards the side, whereas they probably would be a little better off if we had them middled up. Now we'll be checking them pretty frequently over the next few weeks and be checkerboarding in blank frames just directly beside the foundation as needed so they can grow very quickly. Swarms are comb building machines so they can really get going very quickly. So now the last step we need to clean out the few stragglers that are in the trap. If you smoke it pretty heavily almost all of them will take flight and then you can use a bee brush to get the remaining few. You do want to take a look at it as you're going to make sure that the queen isn't stuck to the side of the box. If you get them up in the air, they take flight pretty well. And we should probably move the box a little farther away. But for the most part, they will just find the old hive location very quickly. And they'll pile right in, as you're seeing. A little bit of confusion, but for the most part, quick and easy. 
there you have an overview of our swarm trapping method. It's probably not perfect, there's probably ways to improve it, and we are working at improving it, but it also seems to be quite effective. We catch a lot of swarms and have a lot of fun doing it. So if you have any questions or comments about it, feel free to drop them below, we'll try to get to them, and thanks for coming along for the ride.